The Taliban now uh, beginning to encircle the Afghan capital, Kabul, as the militants gain control over half of that war-torn nation's provincial capitals. But it took months for the UN Security Council to convene an emergency meeting to admit the dire situation on the ground there in Afghanistan. Even a country that has tragically known generations of conflict, Afghanistan is in the throes of yet another chaotic and desperate chapter an incredible tragedy for its long-suffering people. Afghanistan is spinning out of control. The warning from the United Nations follows another day of gains by the Taliban, claiming Friday it had taken Afghanistan's second largest city, Kandahar. You're looking at exclusive footage from there. The Islamist militant group saying it seized hundreds of weapons and vehicles, as well as large amounts of ammunition in the city. Meantime, the U.S. Embassy in the capital, Kabul, is urging all Americans now to leave immediately. Diplomats were also reportedly directed to destroy sensitive documents and computers before they left. Checking out the map, this is the current situation this weekend there. Uh, currently, the Taliban has taken hold of strategically crucial locations, as they described, very near the capital. The Islamists ramped up their offensive back in April after the U.S. president announced that he was pulling troops out. At the time, the militant group held less than a fifth of the country, but now they control more than half. With the militants then at Kabul's door this weekend, we heard from people in that city. Sure, we are afraid of them as the cities are falling day by day. The capital may also fall after some time. We are afraid. Why is there no weapon support for our security personnel? They are being killed on the front lines. They have to retreat or give up because they run out of equipment. When I see that we are on the verge of losing everything, I really lose hope. I have even taken to asking some of my friends if I have ever done them wrong and asking for forgiveness, because if the Taliban come, none of us will survive. I know we will be killed. During the last Taliban era, I witnessed my mother getting lashed by the Taliban for revealing her face for a couple of minutes. Today, I feel that if the Taliban come to power, we'll return to the same dark days. The people of Afghanistan, especially the people of Kabul, are extremely disappointed in a lack of military strategy that should have prevented what is now a very demoralizing trend for the Afghan soldiers. Entire uh, units, you know, even brigades and corps commanders uh, are, are surrendering to the Taliban, uh, not putting up a fight. Uh, many people in the city of Kabul today that I spoke to told me that why did their sons got killed when they were sent uh, to the remote corners of this country if this was the end result. When you hear the Western embassies tell their citizens that Kabul is not safe or when you hear them uh, deploying forces saying that this is specifically to evacuate their own, uh, you know, uh, citizens, it does not instill confidence in the Afghan government or in the Afghan people. I'm sure uh, that the presence of Taliban uh, around Kabul province and within the city is now an open secret. And what is a threat to a city like Kabul. It's panic, it's chaos. You know, the memories of the 1990s are very fresh when Afghanistan went through a very dark period. I must also highlight another point, that Kabul has had no electricity. So those fears are real, the risks are real, and the people of Afghanistan, quite tragically, don't have a hope in the future of this country. Uh, that is crumbling for the time being.